So I normally start out by asking my audience if you know what is the most complex and largest machine man has ever built in the world. Big Bertha. Big Bertha. <laughs> no, it's actually the electric grid. If you're ever up in the air, 30,000 feet, look down. You'll see the largest machine we've ever built as human, man, as human mind, the electric grid. We've had electricity for over 100 years now, but we're still very much a dark planet. There's still a lot of places in the world that have not had access to electricity in the last 100 years. They probably don't even know what electricity is in some of these places. So just like many other engineers out there, a group of us from Seattle decided to see if we could create a movement, an open source movement, a collaboration to build something to start us thinking about how would we electrify places out there that governments have forgot about. So we got together, a group of us, in the campus of Seattle University, not far from here, and we sat down and we brainstormed. We said, okay, let's put a plan together. Let's see if we can build a future, one block at a time, ground up. So our first order of business was to find a location, something near, something that would benefit from what we were doing. So we started to look at the statistics out there. One in five people in the world do not have access to electricity today. That's approximately one, 1 1.2 billion people globally. And you start to narrow it down. Well, where are these people? Three in five in Africa, primarily rural populations, have no access to electricity today. And we started looking at the statistics out there. As good as they are, we wanted to know, well, where's growth going to be? Where are all those new children going to be in the year 2100? We will be approximately 10 billion people in the year 2100. Africa will be three and a half billion people. Africa's land mass is three times that of continental United States. Africa's population today is 750 million people. That's four times growth in the year 2100. We found our location, Africa. I said, okay. Does anybody know a place in Africa we can go to to try some of these things out? It so happened we met a couple, Steve and Christy, who had started a school in Africa, a beautiful school on Lake Victoria, called Christie's Cape Academy. 300 students were being taught out there. Not all of them could afford to come, but they never turned down a single student. An area full of poverty, an area full of orphans because of HIV. We said, okay, let's try and figure out how to get this community up and going. School had been going on for about five years, and it was doubling every couple of years. So we said, let's put a business case together, and let's see if we can find the funds to create this open source collaborative approach to electrify this rural population. So we were lucky, in some sense. We were lucky because we, we happened to come across a number of grants out there that were looking for solutions to these kind of problems. And one of them was the Alstom Corporate Foundation, which I'm a member of. And it's a nonprofit organization. It's a foundation. We applied to them, and they were granted us some funds. We're also lucky in that Seattle University was on board, fully on board. They saw a benefit, and they'll come back to this benefit at the end of this little story I'm telling you. And then we also reached out to the IEEE, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, about 400,000 of us globally. And we asked them for help in terms of tooling, in terms of people. And they came back and said, yeah, that's great. We're setting up something called an IEEE Smart Village, an outreach-based program, just like Engineers Without Borders or Doctors Without Borders, to go out and do these things. It all came together pretty fast. In about three months, we got the funding and we got the team together. The business case 
for the school and for the surrounding community. And remember, we could not just do it for a school. There was a community around the school. We had to have impact for all of the community. So obviously, the first business case was to try and provide improved study conditions for children in their huts. Secondly, the ability to provide affordable electricity, reachable electricity. Now, a nice thing about Africa, everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has at least one cell phone, from what I realized on my trip. And they would walk three, five, ten miles to charge the cell phone. And this were kids that would have to walk three or five miles. We said, hmm, what if they could do that at school? That would increase the number of kids coming to school. It would bring their parents back into the school. Let's use that school as a central position. So again, the business case was building up. We said we had to be sustainable. We had to keep it green. No greenhouse gas emissions. No nitrous, no methane, no carbon dioxide. What do we have out there? Well, we have a lot of wind. It's on a cape. And we have a lot of sunshine. Solar PV. Great. Okay. Finally, we really wanted to reduce the usage of kerosene in homes. Kerosene, if some of you don't know, uh, is the primary source for cooking and lighting in the developing world. It is the primary source. It is dangerous. It is very polluting. So we, we got together, we got the funding, and we said, well, how are we going to build this? We said, these two professors from Seattle University said, hey, we got a group of students that are about to go into their final year of electrical engineering. Let's see what they can do for us. Ah, great. We now have resources to do a design project. We got final year students, hands on, to say, come up with a design. They came up with a really great design. It won a grand prize for all electrical engineers. We had the open source design to move forward, thanks to the students. We then said, OK, great. Now we've got to go and deliver this thing. Let's create a team of people. And what was neat was we were able to bring in not just engineers. Because remember, you're going out to provide a service to this community. You need people to do design from an electrical standpoint. You need someone to be a website. You need somebody to do communications and marketing to do fundraising. We had to bring in students from all parts of the university and engineers and non-engineers into this team. And over the next nine months, we did a number of trips out there. And in August last year, the system went live. Went live in under nine months, serving about 500 people. We said, hey, this is great. We could actually do this. Now, technology was a key part of how we had to deliver this. And things that the developed world is still trying to use, it's everyday business as usual in that part of Africa. That cell phone I mentioned, communication, the wireless comms, that's how they move money around. That's how they transact. That's how they pay for things. So we had a mechanism to charge, minimal amount for them to charge their cell phones and charge their battery kits that they were going to use for lighting their homes. Easy. Next was, well, we're putting this small but rather complex system in a rural part of Africa. And we said, well, how are we going to monitor this to see what's going on, see if it's performing? There were a number of students and engineers said, well, there's this thing called cloud and big data. I just put it up there. Get data out in real time from this little system in Africa. Put it out there so we can monitor it from wherever we are. We can give it to the local utility and say, look what's happening. Look what we can do with a little system. So technology was a key part of how we implemented this. The outcome, what we started with, we wanted to electrify rural, electri uh, provide electrification to rural Africa. But what we started out was, what we ended up was, we were able to enrich the education experience. This is so critical. In a time 
where we are trying really hard to train electrical engineers and to retain electrical engineers, to get electrical engineers into electrical engineering schools, this was great. This was a way to show them that they had impact on the communities. Okay? We gave them a real life experience. So they didn't just do the design in a room on a laptop. Once they finished that, we said, do you want to go out to Africa and be part of the team? Do you want to actually see what it is out there to dig a ditch with a shovel? Not with a tractor, with a shovel. There were no tools out there. There were no electrical tools out there. You had to do everything manually. You want to see what it's like? Yeah. And there was a benefit to society. There was the common good part that came back to them. And they felt that as they were out there and they were doing. And they wanted to stay on longer. Some of them stayed there for four weeks in a rural part of Africa to do this. And we hit on something. We said, we started with open source collaboration, and we ended up with, we're able to enrich education experiences. What do we do next? Do we end? Do we say it's done? We said, wait a minute. Someone came up, someone mentioned this in one of our meetings. It's an old saying from Confucius. I hear and I forget. I see and I understand. I do. And I understand. This whole concept of I do and I understand hit us back and said, we got to make this mainstream as part of the education process. How do we share this with other universities out there? How do we share this with high schools out there? How do we get the community involved so that we can build up our STEM education again? Can we can build up our core capabilities in electrical engineering? So moving forward, what we've done these two professors, because we've started off an NGO based here in Seattle that's reaching out to the world. And what we're sharing is through open source methods, sharing what we've done, building up experiences. We're already out there today doing multi more projects in rural Africa, just after this was completed. We're able to enrich that experience. Right? At the end of the day, it's still about bringing electricity to those that don't have especially in this digital world of ours. Thank you.